many women say, I, I've heard, heard this in conversations, you know, I, I can't understand why I'm attracted to, to this person. You know, let's say that he's a drug dealer. Um, what I come to, to that happens. That, I that dated happens. a woman. I dated a woman for a few years. She said, "You know, when I was using crack cocaine, I thought, oh, I know. I'll date my drug dealer. That way, I have a steady flow of crack." So they do it. They 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 get involved with men in prison, murderers. Yeah, and then we guys go. I don't understand that. I understand it. Yeah, yeah. And it's not the case. I I really believe that it's not the case that they genuinely want someone that deals crack cocaine but it's they want the traits the confidence of someone that kind of the the willingness to take risks these sorts of things but you can work a, a very normal uh you know societally beneficial job but mirroring some traits not oh, all so you don't have to be a drug dealer you don't have to be a drug dealer okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be. But the other thing that comes to my mind is I had a conversation, and I think this is going to tie in. I spoke to Robert Cialdini, who wrote the book Influence. Um, he's a very, very well-known uh, psychologist. He was even on Barack Obama's um, – or, or, or he was an advisor to Barack Obama okay. for some sort of psychology um, stuff. And uh, I remember Cialdini told me about what he called the Benjamin Franklin effect. Um, and what this effect is, for a long time, people thought that if I wanted you to like me, I would turn up at your house, I would, you know, cook you a steak dinner, I would do everything for you. And that was how people thought they could get someone to like them. He said, but what Benjamin Franklin was a master of doing was getting people to like him by getting them to do something for him. And what actually happens is, is the opposite is when you do something for me, that makes you like me more. Um, so it, that, that was what was coming to my mind as you were describing it, that kind of paradox. Yeah. And the, 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 there's a psychology to it that makes sense. I've, I've been teaching that thing. In fact, I'm, I'm right now, I'm leading a program. I've got 24 men in a program right now, um, focusing on what I call positive emotional tension, how to live in the world and interact with women in ways that activates this kind of attraction that we're taught that the bad boys have the bad boy mm. and i made a post on the forum just like a week ago where i talked about that benjamin franklin uh uh dynamic because again the nice guys nice guy seduction seduction i'll do things for you i'll give you things and you'll appreciate me you'll you'll, you'll want me you'll 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 want to give back one of the covert contracts of the nice guy syndrome is if i meet your needs without you having to ask then you'll meet my needs without me having to ask but as I told the guys in this program, that, that creates no emotional tension for the woman. For you to give, just give her something, it just creates entitlement. It doesn't create any kind of emotional, energized connection. But yes, when, when, when like, for example, I tell guys, when I was dating, instead of, you know, offering to buy women drinks, I'd say, well, hey, buy me a drink. I said, you buy me the first drink, and if you want to hang out with me, I'll buy the rest of them the rest of the night. And so I'd, I'd have her buy me a drink first right to see if if number one she had enough incentive to plop down five bucks ten bucks whatever you know to just hang with me and if if she couldn't even pull out five or ten bucks out of her purse why am i going to plop down money to buy her drinks right so the the thing was i got her doing something for me right and then i just i'll buy the rest of the drinks the rest of the night so you buy the first one so it was a test but what happens with that benjamin franklin effect the mind the human mind wants consistency so if you if you get someone to do something for you, and especially an enemy, so that's what Benjamin Frank he'd get the people that were not on his side to do something for him. And now if you're doing something for somebody, your brain wants emotional consistency. It doesn't it doesn't like emotional or intellectual uh, distortion or or, or, or um, the word's not coming to mind. Uh, okay, it'll come back to me. Inconsistency, so, is it? Well, inconsistency yeah. and, and this is cognitive distortion. It right. wants a consistency. So the mind is thinking, I'm doing this thing for this person. I He must be a good person or mm. I must like him or I must value him. The mind will think up an excuse, a reason why I'm doing something. I, I, I actually think he's kind of a dick and I don't, but you know, here I am, I'm doing something for him. So maybe he isn't such a dick. 
But when you're doing stuff for them, they can keep thinking you're a dick all day long because, you know, the mind doesn't need any kind of, even no matter how much you do for them, if they think you're a dick, you can, you, you can give to them all day long and it's not going to change anything. So yeah, there's a psychological dynamic there around the mind wanting that, that kind of consistency. And again, the, the men I work with think, well, I'll just do all these nice things for these people. And then they'll do nice things. They'll, they'll want me, they'll like me, they'll love me, they'll want to get naked with me. They'll give back to me. And the truth is they tend to just keep taking and not know there was a covert contract, not know that we even expected them to give anything back or that we expected them to like us. Kind of, kind of like the, the average nice guy, if he finally gets up the nerve, if he's been in the friend zone for a while with a woman that he's been crushing about forever, but never touches her, never makes a move, never initiates, never asks her out on a real date. And if he does like ask her out on a date or say, you know, I, I really like you. I want you to be my girlfriend, whatever. Most will not be that direct, but you know, they'll, they'll ask her out on a date and the woman will go, what me, you go on a date. Oh, I, I never thought of you in that way. I, I, I couldn't do that. That would ruin our great friendship in which you listen to me talk about my problems all the time and make my car payment. And I don't have to give anything back. Why would I, you know, why would I become your girlfriend? <laughs> there might be something required of me then, but is, is, you know, the more you do for some, somebody, the less they have to like you or, or even feel, you know, that, that you're, that you're of value other than to keep doing things for them. That's all.